What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin Perontis Head. And so here we have Perontis Head posing out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through his accessories really fast. Perontis Head does come with two pairs of hands. We do get a right grip hand, a left fist hand, and then we get a pair of clawing hands. He does come with his nunchucks, which look really nice. I like the fish detailing on them. And then we do get a swishing effect. Other than that, Toronto's head doesn't come with anything else. I would have liked to see another fist and another grip hand for the opposite sides, but uh, who knows what Hasbro's thinking half the time. But anyway, with that out of the way, guys, let's actually take a closer look at Toronto's head. And so here we have a closer look at Perontis head and Hasbro has done a really good job with the detailing on this figure. It looks very good. I love the sculpt work on this figure. You can see just the amount of detailing on his face is done beautifully. All these wrinkles, they look amazing. They did a really good job painting his eyes. Although I would have liked to see a brighter shade of red and maybe a pupil or an iris in there. That would have been really nice to see. But the eyes are still really impressive. And I love the paintwork on this figure. Um, I really do appreciate the fact that Hasbro is starting to make the villains their own series. That way they do get the care and treatment that they really deserve. Because we saw in those initial figures that they were skipping on a lot of paint. This one has paint where we need it. If he was part of well, Series 1, he'd probably have like a white torso and then a blue torso double molded. Here you can see there is a fade in the blues and the whites, so I do like that. Even up here on his crest or his fin, you can see the transition to this really nice pink color. Even right here on his side fin, so those look really nice. I do like that. And then we even get some pink running down the center of his face, which is a really nice detail. And one thing I do like is that they did paint the inside of his mouth. That is really good. I do like that. I'll get into some things I don't like about the figure when we go on to articulation, but for now, we'll just focus on his detailing. Uh, out of the packaging, this fin that is on his dorsal is going to be a separate piece, so you do have to plug his dorsal fin into his back, which it pegs in no problem, and you know what, it doesn't fall out, so I do like that. We do have this really nice scaling texture on the back of this figure going all the way down to his tail fin, which is in the right position. You can see it's this really nice shade of pink matching the shade of pink right here on his dorsal as well as here on his side fins. So I do like the detailing on Perontis head. They did a really good job, especially the sculpt work. And I like the way it's segmented here. It just continues that segmented look and it really does bring the figure together. Now if we have a look at his arms, where I think he is lacking a little bit of paint, a little blue would have done wonders. I know it's probably not accurate, but a little blue uh, highlighting would have been really nice to have on this figure just to bring out all this nice detailing on his shoulders. It is a shame that we don't get even this beige color would have been nice to bring out some of the detailing here on this off-white. So going down to his arms, I do like the fact that he has fins on his arms, which again carry over that pink color scheme. Really nice detailing there. You can see he does have his fist and his grip hand out of the packaging. I haven't changed that out yet. And then on the front, like I said, his stomach is done in this really nice beige color, and then his back is done in blue, and they did a really good job of matching it. Although I think the paint is more on the beige side, where his... Uh, flesh tone right here is more on an off-white because you can see a color difference right there. It's not too bad, but it is something to note. Then go on to his legs. You can see he has some more fins right here where he has that same pink that we saw on his tail. And then this is probably my favorite thing. He has this aquamarine color right here on his legs and that looks really nice. And the transition from the green to the white to the back looks really clean. I do like the fact that Hasbro did that. It's one of those things that I feel like maybe his entire leg should have been the same color, but I didn't look at any reference picks before doing this video and I do apologize about that, but it still looks really solid and it continues on with that faded look that we saw. Now, one thing I don't like about the figure, he is kind of floppy. You can see his legs kind of flop around here. They're not the sturdiest, they move around, but he stands no problem. 
Holland, so that's not an issue. Uh, you might have an issue getting him in more dynamic posing, but yeah, he does feel a little bit floppy and flimsy in places. Like his hips are obviously one of those fail points, and then his jaw is another one. Instead of casting his head in two different plastics and then having a hinge, they opted to have a hinge where his head would peg into a normal body. So this is actually like his head. This is how his head moves. It is really strange. And then this neck piece, it's kind of like a scarf that just sits over the neck piece and the head just sits over like a normal head would. And that does allow you to do stuff like that or just get him moving his jaw in many different ways. So that's a little bit strange, but it's cool at the same time. So. With that out of the way, let's actually get Piranha's head compared to other figures you may have in your collection. Here we have Piranha's head posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Piranha's head posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112th Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. And finally, here we do have Piranha's head posed next to a Lightning Collection White Range and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually run through his articulation really fast. And like I was saying in his detailing, his head is done in two parts, although I don't like the way they did it. He essentially has a ball joint here on the uppermost part of his jaw, so that does hinge. I wonder if it's a ball hinge. I don't know. I haven't tried moving it back or anything, and I haven't tried popping his head off. I'm pretty sure it's just a ball joint in there. Yeah, it's just a ball joint, so his upper jaw is on a ball joint, so it does hit, uh, move up and down, does tilt to the side, does turn left and right, which is kind of strange. It looks like somebody punched him so hard it broke his jaw. And like I said, it is kind of strange because I would have expected his head to be one unified piece. But yeah, unfortunately, most of the jaw movement is only going to come from the upper jaw. And as you can see, it's from that ball joint. His lower jaw is basically a scarf piece that goes over that ball joint. Let's see if I can pop it off so we can see what's going on. Okay, yeah, there we go. So yeah, his lower jaw is just a piece that sits on that neck piece so it doesn't have any articulation without the upper jaw and it does look like he was supposed to have a two piece jaw that pegged in you can see the what well, I'm guessing they're residual peg ports but I guess they scrapped that idea don't know why but they did so yeah he has a scarf piece as a neck so there's no movement there it just sits on his shoulders speaking of his shoulders he does have a butterfly joint which does pivot forward and back he does go all the way around no problem arms don't really go out to the side because of his shoulder pads right here um, that's about as far as you can get him to go and do they move independently yeah his shoulder pads are a rubber piece sandwich between his shoulder joint and this butterfly joint but because of the design you don't get much movement out of that that's about as far as you can get unfortunately he does have swivel here at the bicep double bend here at the elbow working really nice he does have a hinge and a swivel here at the wrist we have your standard lightning collection ball joint at the torso so that moves around really nicely and I do like the fact that it does have enough clearance to move back and forth. Then we do have a hinge here in the torso. So he does hinge pretty far forward. Hinges back really nicely. I do like that. No swivel at the waist. Most of your swivel is going to be done at this ball joint. So going on to his legs, we do appear to have just regular ball joints here at the hips. So they do move forward and back. Out to the side, no problem, and I do like the fact that the fin does uh, go with the leg. You can see it's a softer plastic, so it will get out of the way. We do have a swivel here at the thigh, double bend here at the knee, going pretty far. I'm not going to lie, that's really impressive. He does have a swivel here at the ankle, as well as a hinge and a forward-facing pin for rocker ankle. His final piece of articulation is a ball joint here at his tail, so that does move around really nicely. I would have liked it if this was a little bit cleaner, that you didn't see the seam line right here on the back, but I understand why it's designed that way. It's basically his back piece and then the tail piece pegs into that. So overall, Piranha's head has some pretty good articulation. Questionable articulation at the head, though but still good articulation nonetheless minus the shoulders so with that out of the way guys let's actually get Piranha's head pose for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review
And so here we have the Lightning Collection. Mighty Morphin Perantis had posed for my final thoughts and overall Hasbro surprisingly did a good job on this figure. I know they haven't done a good job on most of the monsters. In fact, about 60% of the monsters have been terrible with King Sphinx, Pumpkin Rapper, and Eye Guy. But Pudgy Piggy and this guy, Perantis Head, is a very good figure. So I will say about 40% of the figures are good, 20% are okay, and another 40% are terrible bad but front his head is still an impressive figure in terms of sculpt articulation and detailing I do like the paint apps on him they did a really good job painting this figure I will say the head is a little bit strange but you can work it with it I would have preferred a hinge rather than a ball joint on that top joint mainly because you don't get to open his mouth as wide as you would like it's kind of strange when the upper jaw is separate from the bottom jaw especially when the bottom jaw is nothing more than a neck piece and that's kind of surprising it's a little bit fishy why Hasbro would do that but overall they did a really good figure here with Perantis head now if you are looking for a Perantis head, he is starting to hit stores at the time I'm making this video. I did see him available on Target.com, on Amazon, and other retailers such as Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth. And that is where I picked up my Perantis head from Amazon, where surprisingly he did cost $29.99. I got him when the pre-orders originally went up. If you did get him now, you are looking at about $32 for this figure. I think $32 is asking a bit much, especially $30. $25 would have been a a good price for Perantis head but I'm still gonna say $30 is fair 32 it's really up to you Perantis head looks good when you have him fighting against the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or you have him teamed up with all his other monster friends with that being said guys I'm King of Dragons 5000 don't forget to like this video leave a comment subscribe to my channel go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other Power Ranger lightning collection videos hopefully you find them informative as always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments and if it fits in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care everyone.